what can you tell me about writing what you know? Like and a, and a, yeah, and a, writing what I know. Yeah, just writing what you know, or writing what other creatives know, and like how is it important when it comes to like making anything? Um, I mean, yeah, uh, I guess I guess that goes along the lines of saying, you know, uh, at, at the beginning, um, I am a forever student. You know, like uh, so, I, you know, I started this thing three years ago. Um, you know, like uh, I just started reading and watching as much. I mean, that's any spare time I have, which is, you know, not, not much. I'm, I'm watching other people learning other people, you know, learning from other creators who are already considered to be professional. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, writing what I know, I guess I'm just consult being that I'm consistently uh, learning because I am not a professional. Yet, I mean, I guess I've always said that I, you know, the definition of a professional is doing something and getting paid for it. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm making comics. I'm, I have sold. I um, started selling physical copies of my manga Crossmancer uh, two months ago at my first convention in Ocala, Florida. Congratulations on that! Thank you, thank you. Um, so, yeah, right now I am. Still, I am learning the ins and outs of uh, what is it like? Like inventory. I'm like, okay, I sold mm -hmm. this many books, but now I have to plan for my next convention. So I, you know, I need more books, and how much? How much is that going to cost out of the money I made? And then I have to keep progressing with the story. So now I'm doing, you know, the business side of creation, which a lot of people don't think about, and that's how a lot of small independent creators sputter out because they're just like ah yes i thought i was just going to create and i mean that's why a lot of uh people especially specifically in my um space of creating comic books is it's all online everything is um webtoons they, you know, they use webtoons canva um uh, what's not? It's not. Uh, I mean, it's dot io. Um, Literally everything under the sun. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's there's so many different avenues that people are just taking uh, advantage of, and that's that's awesome um, that they can't do that because I mean the internet is infinite, and depending on what you want to use it for, good or bad, um, it is there to be taken advantage of. Um, but you know, to stand out, which is what I aim to do. Um, with my company, Mavros Prime, is be uh, a step above the rest. I, I definitely think, like, yes, I implore everyone to be creative, do what you want as far as showing your truth, showing your story. But at the same time, I also believe there is believe there's a, a level of quality that should come with that um with that belief you know uh, like i said it's uh the, the market's oversaturated uh with people who are trying to you know make a quick buck uh sometimes just trying to or you know a lot of scammers out there uh, of people with uh who, who didn't do the research who didn't do the studying who didn't learn the science who didn't study the ingredients um there's a lot of people out there that are just, but they're loud. And, you know, everyone knows that the loud and wrong people are always on the front page while the people who are studying, learning, creating, crafting, uh, perfecting their, their uh, craft, they are they're quiet and they might not get seen as much. But once they figure out their formula, they you're like, oh, my God, this was an overnight success story like this guy was no one and then the next day he had a million views on tiktok or instagram and it's like no that was not overnight he has been in his lab studying the ingredients making sure he's not making the wrong uh moves so that people will you know push him off to the wayside so he's not um discredited because of something that he said he was going to do and he didn't do because he learned very quickly that this is not an easy path to follow. Mm -hmm. What do you think we can learn from the people oversaturating the market? 
Uh, what can we learn from people? Um, take your time. To, you take your time. It's not. It's not a. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. You do not need to rush yourself to to put your stuff out there because you want to make sure that when it is finally put out there, that it is not only up to par with what you want, but up to par with what people, what people want. Because in the end, I mean, some people say, you know, I wrote this for me and I'm like, okay, if you wrote it for you, that's fine. You know, you didn't, you're not looking to make any money off of it. Mm -hmm. That's fine. A passion project. So you can do a thing and say, I did it. That's fine. I know a lot of people that make music that way. They make a CD because they're like, I want to make myself a CD so I can say that I did a, I was a musician and I made my own EP. And I'm like, that's awesome. But if you want to be a musician, if you want to be an artist, I want to be a comic book creator. I want to be an animator. This is much more than what I want. I am trying to inspire. I am trying to provide a space for BIPOC creativity, diversity, in the fantasy space so i have to make sure that everything i am doing is not like everybody else who's just taking you know not studying not doing the research not doing the the groundwork and putting their stuff on the internet and just looking for quick likes you know quick money and and, and they're not here for the longevity of it so mm-hmm. that is what we can learn from those who are oversaturating the market. What do you want people who listen to or listen to a play or what read your uh, mm-hmm. comics, manga, or play your games? What do you want them to take away from like the story? What's the message that you want to take? Want them to take away from the media, the art that you create? Mm. I want them to take away that just because someone or something looks different in this space that has been around for, you know, excuse me, uh, what is it, like maybe close to, almost even close to 100 years, like video games haven't been around for over 100 years yet. Uh, Um, And look how, look how, look how vast. Far we've gone. Yeah, far we've (laughs) gone. It's insane. Right. Like video games have only been around for like 60, 70 years. Um, So... Yeah, it's just I want them to take away like just because it looks different doesn't mean it can't have that same feel and that same type of uh, inspiration to anyone across the world. Like obviously, BIPOC uh, people in the world have all been inspired by art, video games, and so on and so forth. But we don't have a lot of uh, representation in the past. But just because they didn't look like us doesn't mean we weren't inspired. Mm. You know, we were still we still took that and was like, oh, my God, this is amazing. I would love to do I would love to see more. And then you started inserting yourself into the story. And like now I want to create this thing, but I wanted to look even more like me. I wanted to I wanted to reflect who I am and what I what I imagine in my brain. And I want to provide it to the people and I want to inspire other people some people do that not everyone <laughs> I have like a first first question uh, well quick question I would say uh, can you quickly explain what BIPOC is for people who never heard that phrase before BIPOC stands for black indigenous and people of color so that is I guess you know it can be I guess it's literally anyone who is ethnically from countries who have darker skin than like an olive tone. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Indians, uh, Caribbeans, uh, Asian people are also BIPOC people, which a lot of people don't know, strangely enough. Um, Native Americans, black people, obviously. Um, Yeah. 